So here's another question on forces. Below we have a ice skater standing on ice. Write down the equation that links acceleration with change in velocity and time. So this equation is acceleration equals V minus U over T. Part B. As the skater pushes away across the ice, there is a small frictional force. After pushing, the skater starts to move with a velocity of 5 meters per second. He slows to 3 meters per second in 6 seconds. Calculate acceleration. So they've given us a lot of information. However, the main thing here is working out acceleration. And since we already have an equation above, we can use that to answer this part. So first of all, we're going to use the equation. That means we're going to use the equation A equals V minus U over T. Now we already have V. So V minus U is basically change in velocity. U is initial velocity and V is final velocity. A good way to remember that is U comes before V in the alphabet. That's why U is the initial. And together they are divided by time. So here we have V because it says he slows down to 3 meters per second. So that means it must be the final velocity. U or the initial velocity is 5 meters per second. And the amount of time it takes for him to slow down is 6 seconds. So we can put this into our equation and we get 3 minus 5 over 6, which is minus 0 0.33 meters per second squared. Now the fact that we have a negative acceleration means he's slowing down, which is correct because the question says he slows down. Or in other words, we have a deceleration here. So always remember, negative acceleration basically means the person is slowing down. Part C, write down the equation that links acceleration, force, and mass. So this is equal to F equals MA, which was also known as Newton's second law. Part D, work out the frictional forces acting on the skater to slow him down. So in other words, we want to find out force. That means we need to know mass and acceleration. We've been given the mass already, it's 70 kilograms, so we can place that there. As for acceleration, we worked this out in part B. It was 0 0.33 meters per second squared. So we can put that there and then times them together. So that's one mark, which gives us 23.1 newtons. There's our second mark. Okay, the final part now. Here we have to try and get all four marks. The skater is standing still on ice. He throws his bag forwards and moves backwards across the ice himself. Use the idea of conservation of momentum to explain why he moves backwards. I think it's best if we can picture this. So here we have a boy standing on ice, not moving at all. And let's say all of a sudden an animal appears on his shoulder. It's a very demanding animal. So the boy gets shocked and decides to throw his bag. So the bag and the boy move in opposite directions. Why does this happen? How come it's not only the bag that moves? Why does the boy move as well? So we can think of this in terms of momentum. We have the before and after scenario. The total momentum before was zero because nothing's moving. The boy, the bag, everything's still. Since the total momentum before is zero, that means the total momentum after must be zero as well. However, we can see clearly that the boy and bag are moving which means that the momentum of the boy plus bag must be equal to zero. In other words, in other words, they're cancelling out. So if we rearrange this equation, we get boy equals minus bag. So the momentum of the boy and the bag are equal but opposite. So to answer the question, here's what we're going to say. Step one, before throwing the bag, the momentum of the boy plus bag is zero. That's one mark. When it is thrown, the bag has a forward momentum. We saw in the diagram that the bag moved forward. That's our second mark. This means the boy's momentum is going to be equal and opposite, in this case, backwards. So it's really important to mention equal and opposite. That's our third mark. And finally, why does this happen? It happens because total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. Or in other words, momentum is conserved. Okay, here's another exam style question on forces. We have two cars which are moving and before they collide they look like this and afterwards they're going to collide. So the first question is, what is meant by the statement momentum is conserved? 
So momentum conserved means that the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after a collision. So whenever you have momentum questions, always remember that the momentum before an event is equal to the momentum after an event. Okay, next part, calculate the velocity of the two joined cars immediately after the collision. So here's our two cars again. So here's how we do velocity questions involving momentum. First of all, we want to work out the total momentum on the left or before the collision. That means we have to work out the momentum of each individual moving object and add it together. So for the big car, it's going to be mass times velocity, which is 1500 times eight, plus the small car, which is 900 times zero. The total momentum before is going to be equal to the total momentum after. Now, after the collision, we actually have one object, or you can say that they are moving together as one object. So that means this object will have a mass of 2,400, basically the mass of the two cars added together. However, we don't know the velocity. So all we're going to say is 2,400 times V. So that's the momentum before equals momentum after. Now all we have to do is work out V. So simplifying this gives us 12,000 on the left. Next, we're going to divide both sides by 2,400, and that gives us velocity. So 12,000 divided by 2,400 gives us a final answer of five meters per second. So the two cars which are joined together after the collision are still moving forward, but they're moving at five meters per second. Okay, this question says, explain why it's safer to wear a seat belt compared to not wearing a seat belt in a car collision. Now to answer a question like this, we're going to use this equation, force equals change in momentum over time. This equation is commonly used in triple science. However, we don't have to use this equation to answer the question. However, we're just going to use this to explain what's happening in the scenario. So imagine we have two cars which are both moving at the same speed and have the same mass. The only difference is that in the top car, the person is wearing the seatbelt, but in the bottom one, they've decided not to wear their seatbelt. Let's see what happens. Both cars are going to end up crashing against the wall and we can see that they're both going to stop moving. So in both scenarios, they have the same change in momentum, 12,000 to zero. So you might think, hold on then, what's the point of wearing seat belts? To understand the effect of seat belts, we're going to have to look inside the car and see what happens. So here we have the two drivers. The top driver is wearing their seat belt, but the bottom driver is not wearing one. So let's see what happens to the bottom driver. The person without the seatbelt is going to quickly smash into the airbags. However, the person with the seatbelt is going to take a very, 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 very long time to smash into the seatbelt. Okay, maybe that was a bit exaggerated. But the point is, wearing the seatbelt delays the time it takes for the person to move. So in terms of our equation, we said that force equals change in momentum over time. Although they both have the same change in momentum, wearing a seat belt increases the time it takes for that momentum to change. Therefore, force will decrease. So remember, make sure you always wear your seat belt. So here's how we're going to answer this question. Both drivers experience the same change in momentum. However, the seat belt driver, the seat belt will stretch, which means it'll take longer for the momentum to change. And as a result, less force is exerted on the driver with the seatbelt. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.